want to be a part of the society and whatnot. I've heard it all the time. I always answer that simply because politics is regional, belong to one region of the earth. And it's not a limited ideology to certain people. Also, with its limit, limitation, they're also against each other. So if you follow one politics of one country, you end up working against the humanity somewhere else. This is why Baha'i faith cannot go in it. This is why Islam doesn't go in it. No religion accepts politics. Islam says this is a light neither from the east nor from west. Then, if that is the case, how could Islam enter any politics? This is the policy of Omar and Abu Bakr and Osman, that they were seen Iranians and Arab. Imam Ali and the Immaculate Twelve Imam, they would never see any difference. They would say they're all Muslims. Whoever accepts Islam is Muslim. There's no difference. Okay? So, but Baha'u'llah, particularly about Iran, in the Kitab that says that in future, he says, their people will govern over you flock of the people, all the people, that is what the Republic is. And, and creating real havoc in you. Okay, he uses the word estrab, disturbance, he says. This is the disturbance, this is estrab, not englab for us. But he says, watch out, he says. God will change it and take it back and give you the tranquility. It will come. But Abdul Baha translating this in two books that's on the internet, dear Iranians, if you want to go see it, at the Baha'i Library.org. The writing of Abdul Baha clicks, it's called Resali Siyasiye La Resali Modoniye, the political epistle and the epistle to the civilization. Just read them. See how nicely, beautifully. Abdul Baha explains, every time clergies interfered into the politics, it created problem in Iran. He explains how in the battle with Russia, we lost all that 13 cities in the north to Russia. Because the clergies, they involved themselves in it and in the war, he says, in the field, in the war, in the front, they all escaped. This is the reason why the clergies, they hate Iranians, for two reasons. Number one, we have no clergy and the priest. Baha'is, they do not have a priest. How can a man rule another man? Baha'u'llah ordered democracy in the religion. A priest, an ayatollah, any rank, rank you want, it has to be by election, not a one of nine people. So as soon as clergy, they see that, uh -uh, I said, no, 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 we don't want this, we don't want this. Of course, because you're going to go home. People are going to elect who their uh, spiritual authority is. The second thing that they didn't like Baha'i Faith is because Baha'i Faith says man and women are equal and right. Oh, no one Muslim, they like that. That's their comfort zone. They don't want to hear their woman to be equal to them in any shape or form. This is the two reasons that the Baha'i Faith is hated by the Iranians. So, but Abdul Baha completely explained religion is its place, politics it says, is its own place. These two cannot be mixed. He told you that. But you didn't read it. Complacency. You listen to your leaders. Whoever had a turban and a beard and a rope, certified registered leader. That's all for you. You didn't. You accused Baha'is and the Baha'i faith of the things they were not. I wish your accusation was right. You can accuse Baha'is that why didn't you teach us? Why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you follow your own uh, faith properly and set a better example? Those accusations are correct. But saying these other things that you're saying, Baha'is are Zionists or Russians or English, foolish, stupid, complete stupidity. You know, there's no ground for it. There's no evidence for it. You know, except some convoluted. Uh, thought of the people that they never worked in their life and every time they have they're sitting on their bafur and teriyaks and hashish and drugs and then they convolute ideas and you guys buy into it I never read study it I did a study it you know I challenge you in the court of Canada and United States none of your objections that you have brought to the Baha'i faith is not true 
if you could condemn me in those courts, I will willingly accept to die. Myself, I will kill myself if you could. But you're a bunch of lazy liars. A very lousy nation you are. That's what you are, okay? But Abdul Baha, and like all what you say that the Baha'is, they are, they don't respect their countries and they don't care about their countries. Abdul Baha orders that the Persopolis to be built from its original stone. He has that much reverence. He has never said in any other culture in the world. And he calls the Iranian race, the Aryan race, the greatest of them all. But you never look at the positive things, okay? When you read properly in a study, you can understand that this is my concept of what I understood from this epistle, political epistle, that religion of God is for family, the womb of the family in that 15 years. A religious leader is supposed to work on behalf of the prophet of God and the book to enlighten the characters of humanity, of human being becomes a proper individual. Just as this body in the womb for nine months created hand and legs and this and that, in this 15 years, his character gets ready to enter the society on a strong personality. This is the job of the religion. If this man, who is the symbol of honesty and virtue and piety, enters into the politics, imagine what will happen. An area that is full of doubt and lies and trickery. So, Basically, a religious man kills himself when he talks about politics. Then nobody respects him, nobody believes him, you see. And Dolpa says, do not do that. Whereas the politics and religion is how to keep the country in order. When you're outside of your house, religion doesn't work. Religion is for inside the house. But there are relationships in between the people that politicians cannot explain it. The rules in the family is the rule of Muhammad, the prophet of God. It's the rule of Imam Hussein and Imam Ali and Baha'u'llah and Jesus Christ. Because politicians, they cannot uh, bring a law under which the love and unity stand between husband and wife. It's not a contract. It's a matter of heart. It cannot be enacted by the law, by the science, by this, by that, by arts, by poetry. None of it can do it. It's only the job of the Prophet of God. Something that nobody else can do. It's for that. Politics is something else. Prophet of God will not come and die for something that we can do. He's not in competition with us. He says, I know what you could do outside. And I don't care. He says, do what you want to do. It can be done in many different ways. But not to do that. So, from what I see today, I think the predictions of the previous Shah of Iran seems to be coming true. Iran will become Iranistan. Why is that? It's because within the last 30 and odd years, there is no united front. There's no united opposition. You do not have an opposition that united front is what they want to do. Nobody is. I can say there are three fronts. The, the son of the previous king, which is my favorite king, totally a qualified king, this has been raised to be a king, he hasn't said anything outside of his jurisdiction so far, this is one guy. The other one I see is talking about the uh, freedom and democratic right and politics and this and that, that's Maryam Rajavi of the Mujahideen of Khalq. I respect her as an individual, as a woman, for so many years she's been in exile and trying to do things, but their ideology is so out of time. It's not good for Earth, it must be used somewhere in a space. 30 years, these clergy have taught people, uh, brought them into the religion. You know how much people, they hate the religion of Islam to be a part of the politics? And uh, Mujahideen Khalq and Maryam Rajavi is trying to revive it again. Can you believe this? How practical is this? But she herself, I respect her as a person. 
and there was movement inside of Iran. One of them is like Khatami, was a president of Iran, who mentioned that, you know, if you stop the freedom of the people and you fight with freedom, there we lose, he says, anybody lose, anybody, he says. Try to entangle and challenge the freedom, that's where the loss comes. Nobody listens to him either. So, Iran is a country that has been formed through the pre-politics time. What would make the nations? It was either the king and that is force that created the country, nation, or it was the religious belief. These are the two agencies. Recently, and after the Industrial Revolution, we can see politics comes in, and first democracies and uh, elections and whatnot came into the power. Iran has been made by the kings and by the religions. These are the two identity of Iran. They're like mother and the father, but they're old. They're no good. They can't run this country anymore. They have a child called democracy, freedom, right now in the middle, and they have to support this. So, I mean, the wide Iran, really, you can see there are people that are still, they like the kingdom in Iran. Without it, they say that we are uh, cut off from our past. We can't read about Kurosh and Daryush and Ardeshir and al Barsalon. We can't. We like it to be there. Then there are others, the same people also, they like the religion of Islam. Without it, they cannot read Attar and Hafez and Saadi and Molavi and Jami and so on and so forth. Without it, Iran, you know, is not the culture. Religion is the culture. The uh, ingredients, okay, that has made this country from the past, but that doesn't work also. There are two regimes came previous to this regime, which is the pillar of the religion that was before the pillar of a kingdom. These two they did not accept. The king of the previous king did not accept the power, the governing power of the religious people in the heart of the people, in the mind of the people, in their house. He did not recognize this. Now the religious people have come and they do not understand this part of the kingdom. This is why Iran to have two pillars has always one pillar in the modern day. Before kingdom, no religion, and now religion, no kingdom. And both of these two, they disagree with the democracy. They say there's something westernized in this one which largely is true. Democracy that works in Iran does not work in US or Canada and whatnot. That's their own version. We need our own version. So, I'm thinking, if we create a system in which like England and Japan, two examples, one from the West, one from the East, they both came from the mainland of Europe and China. They both have different religion from the mainland. Japan.